Hello Indie Game fans, more Steam Next Festival coverage with a look at Metroidvania Indie Games. We have covered a whole bunch of these before, but they did get new demos that are worth checking out, mixed in with some new, never before covered entries, so see what piques your interest. Let's begin with Biota, a pixel art entry that has a fantastic 8-bit look, being a sci-fi entry set in a mining colony. As with most sci-fi stories, something has gone horribly wrong which is alien in nature. As the mining colony went radio silent and you play as a commando unit sent to investigate. Rather than classic Metroidvania style progression, you're instead able to swap between 8 plus different heroes, each with different abilities, so it's something a little different but a fantastic looking game to kick off the proceedings. An interesting looking smaller game is The Little Brief, one where you play as a little fox-like creature who has to battle his way through the world in order to save his sister. I think that the game has quite an interesting look, where it is rather grim dark in contrast to the character design, but I'm not 100% confident that this will be good, based on the footage and description on the Steam store page, which is a little generic, but I'll give the developer the benefit of the doubt for now. I also mentioned Warped Soldier recently in the video, where I love the one-bit look of this, and the attack animations look great. Another title that is new to the channel is another 8-bit entry in Emu Rom, one that, despite the simple looking visuals, seems to be interesting in design. This is a non-violent entry where you have to scan the various plants and animals on the planet, even being able to use the scanner to uncover secrets in the area. The Metroidvania exploration abilities come in the form of understanding what the various creatures can do, where there looks to be quite a nice variety of biomes and areas despite the simple look. Having seen many combat-focused Metroidvanias, this is a very nice alternative in the space. Another title that fans of the channel will be familiar with is Lone Fungus, the precision platformer-focused mushroom Metroidvania that does take some cues from Hollow Knight. I've been following this developer for a little while since I'm interested in this title, where it did get a new trailer that shows off even more of the game. One interesting aspect is the 60 plus relics and the 15 plus unlockable abilities in line with the charm system from Hollow Knight, where learning various mushroom magic from the different areas will change the physical appearance of the mushroom cap as well, so it's nice to see this progressing along in development. Orbo is set on board an expensive spacecraft where you play as a little robot exploring the ship, having to fight or avoid huge swarms of hostile robots in order to do so. 
No details are revealed with regards to the plot, but I do like the look of this, especially the precision platforming bits. The developer also states that there's no text in this game, so I'm curious if they can pull it off successfully. Metroidvania abilities includes the ability to invert gravity and an air dash, among others, but the aforementioned wordless presentation and impressive looking bosses makes this of interest. Itora is one of the most gorgeous Metroidvanias in development, where you play as the last human left alive in the world infected with a plague, having to fight your way through and to discover the source of this great evil. It is based on South and Central American landscapes, which looks well done, and while I have mentioned it on the channel before, this got a new demo for the festival, so please check it out. I did come across Nyaruru fishy fight when doing my research for an earlier video, but the footage from the first trailer was a little choppy so I held off, and the developers did deliver with the video that you're seeing right now. It is a very anime entry where you're playing as a cat girl where a mysterious curse has been laid upon the village and everyone's suspecting you. Clear your name by finding out what the source is, with decent looking action and of course will be compared to Rebi Ribi. The developer of Haiku the Robot does follow me on Twitter and did want me to pass on the message that there's a new demo for this Metroidvania entry, set in a post-apocalyptic world filled with robots. It did have a successful Kickstarter campaign, where this new updated trailer shows off more mechanics and areas, making this demo a must-play if you love the genre. An impressive pixel art entry is Janosik 2, drawing from the myth and legend of a Slovakian folk hero that is akin to Robin Hood. In a village far, far away. Peasant Rufus was enjoying a pleasant peasant life until one day an evil creature kidnapped his beloved wife Brunhilde. Rufus armed himself with broom and bucket and began his perilous journey. I've mentioned Clunky Hero quite a while back since it looks like a decent Metroidvania entry with a touch of humor, where our protagonist wears a bucket as a helmet and wields a broom and has to go save his wife from a great evil. The most recent news is that the developers have confirmed a release date in November, although it will be in early access, but all the standard Metroidvania skills are here, including double jump, dash, dive, cling and more. It does remind me a little bit of Feudal Alloy but with a different art style, looking to be a decent title to watch. This is how he became the clunky hero. In the beginning, only chaos existed. Innumerable beings were conceived. Two main factions were formed, light and darkness. Chaos cursed the leaders with immortality, obliging them to fight for eternity the Queen of Light and the King of Darkness would fight to the death for the throne of Aeterna and to restore equilibrium. 
Another long in development entry is Eterna Noctis, one that underwent a significant visual transformation after its Kickstarter campaign and has been featured many times on the channel. This new trailer shows off even more of the amazing art, where you play as the King of Darkness, cursed to forever be in conflict with the Queen of Light, where we begin our story at the beginning of a new cycle. Our hero has to regain his former strength, conveniently providing an excuse for the Metroidvania upgrade system, where the combat and precision platforming elements look great. fantastic visuals with varied biomes as well, making this a no-brainer pick. I believe I last covered Trinzi Ruby when talking about the Japanese-centric Indie Live Expo in summer, where this Metroidvania title where you play as a cyborg looks fantastic. It comes to us from developer Skipmore, who you might know from the action-adventure games Kamiko and Feirun, with the developer having quite a signature art style which is taken to the next level with this game. Love the variety shown in this trailer, from combat, puzzles, boss fights, and even vehicles that you can get into, with his slated release being in autumn this year, meaning that it may release soon. Among the newer titles on this list, I really love the look of Sono's Curse a self-described 2D hand-drawn action platformer with metroidvania elements where you explore a cursed cave wanting to tell a story about regret and the value of living in the moment. Despite the look of the character, it is not a Corvian or Plague Doctor mask-wearing hero like many other games where the white bit appears to be the brim of some sort of headgear. In defiance to genre norms, your default attack is actually a kick, which does make it stand out among a sea of Metroidvania games. The hand-drawn art is amazing, especially in the backgrounds and enemy designs, not so much on the environmental objects like spikes, but you can certainly see the Hollow Knight influence here from things like the spinning buzz saws. UI elements are minimal, with simply a health and mana bar on screen, so I do wonder what progression is like and how the game will be structured. Still, a fantastic looking entry that is a great example of why I love festivals like this, and this game is currently on Kickstarter seeking funding, so do check it out. Like the developer of Haiku the Robot, the developer of Transmute is fairly active on Twitter as well, again highlighting the playable demo for this game. Evidently, this game is about as close as you can get to Metroid without triggering legal action, being a sci-fi entry set on a research outpost on an alien planet with a female protagonist that wears a helmet, not being shy at all about its inspiration.
still, I love the look of this, comparable to games from developer Anthony Case like Skelly Celeste and Spirits Abyss, simply being good, clean pixel art. I believe that since we last spoke about this, the release date has been pushed from 2021 to 2022, but I say take the time required to get it right, but in the meantime, check out the demo, taking the number one spot. For more Metroidvania games, watch these videos and I will see you after the jump.